Welcome to the Dev Ready Podcast, where we're helping non-techs build better tech. Today, we're joined by Yuri and Lee from Innovate Wisely. Uh, we connected on LinkedIn, and I think we had a really good conversation on how we're really innovating. A key thing for them is how do they help innovators innovate, um, and really going through that process of really executing on innovation, we can sometimes get a bit lost in the world of small business, corporate of are we executing on something or are we just coming up with concepts that really need to get us nowhere in terms of value or return um yuri lee thank you for joining us yeah thank you for having us thanks for having us you're welcome (laughs) yuri lee whoever wants to go first love to hear a little bit about you your background and um, how you ended up in innovate wisely yeah, so uh, my background is I'm, a, I'm an IT engineer by uh, by trade. Um, been in the business for over 20 years, and always been involved in technology in some shape or form. And uh, and did a did a business degree uh, because I found out there was a big gap missing uh, in in my knowledge around uh, how do you commercialize some of the technologies? How do you understand it? Uh, so that's uh, something I did. Uh, I've uh, started big jump in uh, in. in 2012, I think it was, mm-hmm. and um, I've been doing a lot of stuff based on best practices and innovation mm-hmm. and delivery and complex projects with high levels mm-hmm. of uncertainty. In, um, but it's nothing unique because <laughs> it's based on best practices, world's best yeah. practices. So uh, I met up with, I was introduced with a, with a, uh, from a joint friend uh, from a mutual friend with Lee and uh, I met, met her at uh, Queensland University of Technology and she was doing a master's uh, research and was developing a framework that was unique and scientifically based around uh, knowledge management uh, and capturing and creating new knowledge and uh, we got <laughs> it was the part that was probably missing to make my uh, my own part uh, unique uh, so i very much come from uh, from being in the trenches uh, progressing with teams working in the agile delivery as well as uh, as waterfall delivery projects and very much uh, people focused and behavior focused there. thanks for that and and lee uh, you were interested a little bit about yeah. you but tell me a bit about your background yeah, so I'm an engineer of uh, over 30 years' experience in uh, chemical engineering, uh, focusing in the water industry because I, I have a passion to help the environment, not hinder it, and also to work with community and help um, improve community and society in general. So as an engineer, I always wanted to push the boundaries of um, new solutions, and about in 2013 I became curious um, enough about uh, organizations and how they function to go back to uni and uh, delve into the theory of innovation. And I uh, so I did a, a research degree at Queensland University of Technology and, uh, and from that um, research discovered that there was a missing link with innovation theory and how we go about innovating. And, and it was about knowledge. So obviously innovation and knowledge are linked, but, um, but how they were linked wasn't clear in the literature or in practice. So, um, so I developed a framework around that um, based on case study research. And then in 2020, I formed um, a business, uh, Innovate Wisely, because I realised that the framework and what I'd learned needed to be shared more widely with other organisations, and their best way to do that, obviously, is through a business. And then, uh, and then, yeah, met up with Yuri, and since then, we've been working on validating and testing the framework and coming up with sol- with um, tools to help um, organisations and teams to use the framework so they have more successful, innovative outcomes. Yeah. So, Lee, on the the new knowledge and the framework that you established, tell us a little bit about about that and what that might mean for people that are innovating inside of a business or looking to innovate? Yeah, I guess uh, what it means is it provides a systematic um, and comprehensive methodology for a team to follow right from the commencement of the idea through to implementation. So, and it's a continuous improvement process, um, it, uh, but it, it's comprehensive in that it it takes um, everything from that initiation and the forming of the new knowledge um, through to creating and testing uh, the solution, but also 
the new knowledge aspects that are being created to help your customers adopt the solution. So then, um, in the, then there's an adopt phase, which is like an implementation phase, but, it, but because we focus on knowledge aspects throughout each phase, the adopt phase is also about adopting that new knowledge and embedding that new knowledge. And then the fourth phase is a critique phase, um, which is like a retrospective in um, Scrum language um, or a review, um, but it's done with, in a, with a focus of what new knowledge is being created and where else can we find opportunities to embed or utilize that new knowledge. Um, so it's not about you know pointing fingers or um, anything like that, it's just let's uncover the new knowledge that we've created. So it's a bit more positive and it's looking outward looking to opportunities and, um, and it provides them with a bit, you know, systematic way of doing that. And then that helps them form the next phase um, of, of improvement or you know, could go off to another tangent of another um, project. So, um, so we provide that framework, that systematic way of looking at knowledge through the innovation process. Um, and I guess because it builds on the science of other innovative processes out there, it is familiar. Um, it's not something completely new. So it's easy to embed into existing systems that companies might have, like design thinking or agile ways of doing things or Scrum. It fits in nicely with existing systems, but it adds to them because it does talk about the knowledge aspects and it also then talks to the trust and momentum side of things. Um, Talk a bit about that because trust and momentum, you mentioned that off the air. Um, I found that a little bit fascinating in terms of what that might mean. So the framework intent is to build trust. Is that across stakeholders, across the solution, across the whole process? Where does that sort of sit? And then momentum is obviously a bit easier to describe. Yeah, yeah. So we found um, through the case study research and um, through validation um, is that the trust and momentum is evident in every stage of your innovation process. So it's at the heart of it all and it's at the heart of the successful outcomes that you are trying to attain. So and what we've, we've, um, we've written an article on and developed a bit of a model that describes where trust presents and, um, mm -hmm. and that's, we call that Omnitrust 360 because okay. you know, it is everywhere and in everything. But we point out five, I think it's five different aspects, or is it six, Yuri? <laughs> um, uh, that uh, where trust presents uh, for innovation specifically. And that, you know, it can be in the team, it can be in your stakeholders, it can be in your leadership, um, it can be in the problem you're trying to solve. Do people actually trust that you have a problem that's worth solving? It can be in the solution, you know, is, is it going to meet my needs? As is it the, the right customer? solution? Yeah. Is it the right yeah. solution? Is it going to meet my needs? Do I trust that it will meet my needs? And um, do, I, do I trust that the people providing it understand my needs? Mm -hmm. um, so then uh, um, it also talks to the momentum then is picked up with, uh, you know, how, like for example, how, many, how much resource is provided to that project by the company, um, uh, how much effort or enthusiasm to do the leadership have, do the team have to solve the problems that you're going to face through the innovation journey because there will be problems. And, you, and if you can measure that, uh, the, the trust and the momentum through the whole innovation process, then you... We presented um, in, a, in a way, and, and the, we've developed a way that allows people to measure it in a lead, mm -hmm. as a lead indicator, to use it as a lead okay. indicator rather than as a lag indicator. Because the way we inherently manage innovation um, is flawed in my view, because innovation has a lot of uncertainty in it. And when you're trying to manage it using variables that are, have a lot of uncertainty in it, you're going to set yourself up for failure. Like, you know, how, how, how much, how time, how, sorry, how long is it going to take? You know, how much time, how much money is it going to require? If you're tracking normal All measures those things, for normal things, yeah, yeah correct. I think <laughs> yeah, that's where a lot of businesses can get a little bit lost. Um, 
you're working on something that's new that's you know if it's innovative which means it's somewhat new novel new knowledge um the reality of it hitting a project scope mm-hmm. a time frame and a deliverable on time on budget to plan is very minimal <laughs> the reality is exactly. we're going to be pivoting you mentioned agile a little bit yuri mm-hmm. um, and agile frameworks the reality is we need to work in agile frameworks to be deliver innovation um not in a waterfall approach where it's 12 months we're going to build x and then we're going to test it um that's probably thought for uh, all sorts of problems if you go down that path yeah, yeah. yeah one of the key things yeah. about the uh, the, fr- the framework yeah. is, is it measures <laughs> Um, the tools that go with the framework, they really measure uh, the trust uh, across the different yes. key stakeholders. So, and okay. it does it with lead indicators. So if you're able to, uh, if you if you notice, for instance, one of the key drivers of the initiative mm-hmm. owner uh, mm-hmm. basically has, has been promoted or is doing something, yeah. you know, starting to do something else, he's starting to notice that they're less engaged mm-hmm. and it's impacting the team. So yes. uh, so you can pick on it really quite quickly and make sure you've got mm-hmm. somebody lined up to, to do that. And, mm-hmm. and uh, so it'll, it'll It'll surface that this will be impacting the team it already is to some degree. Mm-hmm. People haven't left yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of those sort of things it will pick up on is uh, experiments that have been done in the market and you're getting getting the indication that oh, what we thought was really uh, what we were trying to do uh, and where we saw, saw the value is not the case. Yes. Uh, if some people are really passionate about delivering some, uh, sort of, uh, dealing with a problem for that customer group or that customer segment mm-hmm. and uh, and all of a sudden that's not where the market is so that's what we're or not now mm-hmm. yeah will they shift to another uh, to another market and, and experiment with that or have they basically gone there's no no this is this is that's where enough. my passion yeah. was yeah got it mm. uh, that's a bit of a challenge in innovation and anything new that we can get stuck on um, what we believe is or what the passion is and we need to be able to pivot with what we learn um, I think that's really really real value is if we can pivot with what we're learning um that's where you really start to deliver a good outcome for an end user and that end user might be a different user that you really um thought we're going to solve for this problem or this person but effectively no our solution goes in a different world and helps a different category and that is difficult sometimes yeah and it may be a timing thing yeah true maybe they're not the innovators uh, or the early adopters Mm. and uh So in innovation from startup right through to, to corporate, um, and I know you work across all different variances, what's some of the roadblocks that you find in these spaces in innovation? So trust being one and obviously momentum. Um, if we're not putting enough resource or energy into, as you framed it, um, in innovation, it can fizzle up and die pretty quickly. How do we encourage businesses to think in that light? It's all about, yeah, continuous momentum, and then continuously building that, opening up conversations to build trust, I would imagine. Hmm. Yeah. I guess, uh, um, I, I, yeah, to think in that light is, is a challenge um, and it is because it does take away from the current understanding and methodology of managing a project. Um, mm. But it, I guess a lot of people are starting to realise that trust is a huge factor in so many things and people are having showing a real desire to want to measure it. And, um, and if you can measure it, then you can manage it. And I guess, uh, so we're just trying to highlight um, that we can help with um, organisations who are interested in, in trust. And what we've developed is um, a, a simple methodology for people to follow um, with a series of questions that people can just say, okay, I'm at this phase, I'm at the form phase, the beginning, the initiation phase, um, and here's a set of questions that I need to ask I'm going to send them to my customers, to my stakeholders, to my team members, or you know, some of those or all of them, and I'll get my measures back, I'll get my insights back, and they'll be valuable. And then from then, I can make informed decisions on what I do next and how to get the trust back or to make sure I keep the trust going or improve. So, um, yeah. In, in many to... occasions, yeah, just in, in many occasions, uh, you're – You'll come back and uh, and you'll find out that you've got some holes uh, in uh, in what your thinking is, and uh, potentially some critical aspects that are missing that uh, under- undermine the trust, and uh, and it's and it could be from the team, it could be from the leadership, it could be from a vendor, critical vendor that you need to work with. Mm-hmm. Uh, identifying them up up uh, up front and uh, and early uh, allows you to address them or even delay it or or or. or 
basically uh, put put it on ice for 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 quite a while until you've actually resolved the issues without mm. burning through a whole lot of money with a with an innovation team trying to do something that's yeah it's going to fail as you already know that that's mm. so basically that's that's failing before it uh, starts and then making sure it's you better set to it fail to early than, yeah exactly then you can solve for those problems rather than going that, that journey and stakeholders are never brought in and then all of a sudden you got pushback internally so that's a bigger problem to solve for. Mm. Yeah. So when we dig in, what's a starting point for you? Uh, you mentioned that you support innovators, um, and that's an area that you really help in. How do you in engage with those type of people, and what's the journey that they are on internally? So as we work in an, in an organisation, um, in my mind, innovation is execution um, and executing on something new and delivering value. Um, some organisations that I've been around believe innovation is having a, a design thinking workshop and that ticks the innovation box. But the reality is we want outcomes and in anything we're looking for outcomes and results that we're looking to strive for. How do we support those people that are really in the trenches in an organisation um, to really drive innovation? Yeah, um, well, that, that's uh, we, we follow your philosophy on what innovation um, is, absolutely, and it's very aligned with my definition. And um, uh, how we support them is uh, we, we do have you know, training programs and um, professional development programs for people who want to learn more about how to innovate using our framework and tools, but also how to where URI comes in is how to bring it into their existing um, organisation and to align it with whatever they're currently using because he's across all the other methodologies and ways of doing innovation. So I guess what we're... and I, One of our, our passions is other people's success. So we are trying to help people make a success out of you know, what they're doing and innovation um, does uh, cost a lot of money, a lot of resource, a lot of time that goes into it. So we're um, there to try and help them maximise their potential and uh, maximise their investment into into that innovation, and um, and part of that you know is you know doing that benefits realisation process at the end in a in a good structured way. So you are um, getting the talk full about potential. that benefits realisation process. So talk about that. Um, yeah, what so does that's that mean the... a lot of in your world? Yeah, so in the framework, um, the fourth phase is what we call critique. And mm -hmm. I call it called it critique because it's more than just lessons learned. It's mm -hmm. really, and, and, and it's more than just metaphors realization, and, but it's all part of that. But it, it's about, like I was saying earlier, it's about trying to find those opportunities. And it's, it's not just about having a workshop on lessons learned and ticking the box and saying, yes, we've done it, all the lessons are in that spreadsheet and there they are over there and no one looks at it again. Mm. That, yeah, that doesn't help anybody. <laughs> it's just <laughs> tick the box and move on. <laughs> yeah. No, no. So um, by uncovering in a, in a, in a structured uh, way that looks at trust and momentum, so you're looking, and, and the knowledge aspects, what, are, what is a new knowledge that we've created where is the trust um, doing well or where is it lacking? Um, where is the energy also, you know, where is it presenting and where is it lacking? You know, what knowledge objects aren't being used? Um, what, are, what are being used? So that, and then by doing that, we're really looking at the full spectrum of the benefits. It's not just about people talking in a workshop and coming up with lessons. You're actually unpacking the full benefit um, of what's being done. And, and then working out a properly structured plan to realise the next lot of benefits that will come from understanding all of those blockers that are stopping progress. Yeah, so if you, if you relate this back to, uh, to uh, Scrum and that kind of stuff, it's yeah. like uh, doing, your, doing your sprint review. Mm -hmm. or whatever your cycle is yes. and uh, and then uh, doing your, your retrospective as, as part of part of that and then basically planning your next sort of an, an, uh, mm -hmm. iteration of uh, of what you're looking at uh, at progressing and it's a key thing is you mentioned the iteration 
because the reality is innovation doesn't stop. Um, oh, yeah. And it, right. it may not land on that final solution that you delivered. It may be 20% there, but we can take that new knowledge as you frame it because that's where it can come from and park it over here or reiterate on the solution or evolve it. Um, and an iteration, as you talk about Agile, it's all about iteration, really. We're always evolving, looking to get better. Um, no, there's no silver bullet in the space, as they would say. Uh, just uh, something to really yeah. add is uh, the framework and the, and the way we do uh, do analysis on on in workshops and, and surveys and that kind of stuff to bring those those uh, lead indicators uh, to the front is in the end is people yes. need to take action yes. and we can recommend uh, yeah. certain parts and we can go okay you've got yeah. some some uh, challenges in, in the trust space and in, in in this stakeholder or we haven't got the support that we need or we haven't got the resources or or this vendor is not seeing our work as a priority uh, mm -hmm. those kind of things uh, will will help surface it then we can provide uh, advice mm -hmm. on the recommendations but in reality somebody needs to <laughs> needs to do something just like in the in scrum or uh, yes. if you're looking at uh, project owners or initiative owners, <laughs> something needs to needs to happen to address uh, some of the uh, some of the behaviours yeah. generally from the team or stakeholders or or the issue that we're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. Action and execution key to any success or outcome really, or learning or evolution, right? So if we're not actioning anything, it just might as well park it and do business as usual. Because um, the reality is you're never going to really deliver on that innovation. It's probably a waste of time, effort, and resource. Yuri. Being in tech, in the world of tech and agile, etc., everyone's talking about AI. Um, I'll bring it to the surface a little bit. Um, how they might use it in business, how they might innovate with it. What are you finding? Because um, I think it's a hot topical conversation today. We're having conversations across small, medium, large. Everyone's talking about it. No one knows where to go with it. Everyone's a little bit stuck. What are you seeing in this world? Yeah, there's a couple of different things I'm seeing. Yeah. Uh, one is uh, businesses, uh, even uh, quite traditional businesses, mm -hmm. are seeing that the pressure on their business is increasing significantly and mm -hmm. their ability to deliver services uh, to their customers and their changing needs is becoming harder and harder. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at, okay, what are some of the things that we can actually uh, use AI for to, uh, to mm -hmm. automate? Uh, yes. uh, can we actually uh, use, if we've got video recordings, uh, can we use those video recordings to, to fill in mm -hmm. some of the, uh, the paperwork that we need to do? Can we transcribe it? Can, can we do things in, in that space to, to reduce the stuff that uh, takes, uh, what's it, five hours normally to, to, to deal <laughs> with something? Can you reduce it to to half an hour or something like that. So uh, a, a review to, process know. rather than a creation process. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, mm. So you still need to make sure you have ownership because you need to check that there's a, a human That's one of the things it. you don't have. Yeah, you want to make sure there's a human across it. Um, it needs to, it's a support skills people. That's my frame on it. Um, it's not a, again, a silver bullet that's going to do the work for you and you don't look at it. Yeah, that's not a good outcome. But definitely trust is a, is a key part of that. <laughs> do you trust the technology? Uh, are you are you ready for it? Some of the things that we've been noticing mm -hmm. is uh, people, uh, because we're dealing mostly with innovators in this space, they yes. go, yeah, 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 this is, this is awesome. Uh, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then they're starting to use it and they go, oh, this could be used for all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so it's really uh, it's who's actually controlling the AI in that sense, who's, who's guiding, who's putting the boundaries and the framework uh, around it to, uh, to guide it. So, uh, so it's, uh, that trust is mm -hmm. built, uh, built on uh, and not, uh, not diminished and uh, people just refuse to use it. Mm -hmm. So yep. it's uh, definitely a shift. Notice that COVID has, uh, mm -hmm. the pandemic has helped people adapt a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we had to react, adapt um, and learn and evolve very quickly. A lot of people are working from home these days and still are, as am I. <laughs> Never worked at home in my life until the COVID uh, pandemic and still hasn't changed. So it's fascinating how we can evolve. Um, yeah, everyone's gone through that, been through that. Some mm. people were already working at home in the past, so they're just still business as usual, but others had to really adapt. And, yeah. Um, and yeah, that um, makes me think about one of the key aspects mm. of innovation um, and that my definition of innovation is that it must have a driver. Mm. It really has mm. to have a strong driver behind the change. So, uh, and it's one of the things about you know, the energy aspects. If you don't have the drive, the need for the change, then there's, there's going to be no energy for that change. Because change is difficult. 
Uh, no one likes to change, really. But when something like you know, COVID pandemic comes along, there, there's a huge drive for that change. So everyone, with, you know, within a couple of weeks, they were online doing yeah. Zoom calls, you know. It's What's this easy Zoom to thing? change when you have to. <laughs> Back against the wall, we've got no choice. Change well, that's is, exactly uh, right. There's no pushback then, is there? <laughs> that's when you get the most momentum happening, right? So that's mm. what people need to try and create is mm -hmm. that yes. desire, um, that need mm. to really understand the need for change or the desire for change, mm. which is what Apple does. Apple has you, you desiring the next product. You don't really need to, but you desire it. <laughs> you have that energy, that momentum. That's one of the major are blockers in any change or innovation. It's that whole change management piece. Um, how do you sort of encompass that in the framework? Is it leading from the trust side or where does it generally stem from for you? Uh, yeah, well, like I was saying, with the understanding the driver, but by, underst mm -hmm. by focusing on the driver, you have to focus on the yeah. customer right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't involve the, the customer, the ultimate customer, it could be internal, it could be external. It yeah. doesn't really matter. If you don't understand their needs and what's going to drive them to change, it's not going to change. Mm. So you need to focus on that right in the beginning in the form phase. And there's a lot of our, the trust questions we have are based on that. And we keep touching on that through each phase to make sure mm. we're still understanding um, their needs and, um, and what's motivating them. Yeah, one, one of the phases. Them. Yeah, mm. one of the other, one of the phases, the adopt phase. So mm -hmm. basically, when you're starting to scope your your initiative, you're yes. looking at how are you actually going to adopt this, and how do you do that in the different cycles? How do you do do, you do it in a proof of concept? Do you go to a pilot? Mm -hmm. Do you go to trial? How do you how do you do all those uh, different iterations of of, uh, of of releasing it? But a key part is I think change is, is on two sides. It's the stakeholders, but it's also the team that needs to change and uh, and, and evolve as 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 you learn. And I think that's a, that's a absolutely essential part. So it's uh, so it's having that trust and, and energy across the spectrum and yeah your core team is absolutely essential to to maintain that because they're going to hit a we're dealing with high levels of uncertainty mm. and uh and, and that's uncomfortable for, for anybody everybody yes <laughs> as a matter yeah it, we always is a point of uncomfort when things don't go to plan and they generally don't in this world yeah so the, the, the plan is great um, but reality is it's going to change yeah um, so how do you how do yeah. you adjust to that mm -hmm. and how do you yes. keep uh, keep supporting each other so one of the things that i do is i do a lot of innovation and agile coaching where you basically mm -hmm. guide these people and they they basically come and have a, have a chat and go, hey, this is what's happening. It's like, is this okay? Because I feel like quitting. <laughs> yeah, you feel like running away, right? <laughs> can feel like that sometimes. It's, uh, it comes, you hit a wall and you think, oh, is it really worth it? Um, but that's a point of breakthrough sometimes when we hit those walls. It's a point of new learning, new knowledge, pivoting um, and understanding what next steps are. And I think you've got to realise that they're good things. Um, but in the time when you're in them, they're not that comfortable. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. the advantage of uh, uh, coming in uh, externally quite often as well, is mm. you can provide that external yes. view, yeah. and um, yeah, you have less uh, less impact. So, uh, but you can actually uh, support the uh, the change agents that are really doing mm -hmm. the hard uh, jobs in their own organisation and know the mm -hmm. organisation a lot better, know the know the political landscape, know some of the challenges, and you can be that mm -hmm. outside uh, outside sounding sounding board, but also mm -hmm. potentially have a connection into the executives uh, where you go, okay, this is what. What's, uh, what's happening is this is our view and this is what you could do about mm. it. And then it's up to them to decide what they do. Yeah, correct, and what action they take on that. An organisation or somebody in an organisation has a concept or idea that they want to drive out. What's the first step? Where should they start? Is it a conversation? Is it a putting it down on paper? Is it a getting clarity across key stakeholders? What's the first step generally that you'd recommend people to take? Yeah, uh, well, we have a system that we use, um, which is called the Knowledge Canvas, and uh -huh. that guides people through a step-by-step -step process to start at the beginning and work all the way through each each step. So it creates a knowledge-based and trust-based strategy or plan for uh -huh. them to execute and it, it starts at the form phase, um, the, or the initiation phase, uh, where they're you know kicking off the project. They understand the problem. They've got an idea of what the solution is. 
Um, they've got a you know an idea of who the team's going to be, that sort of thing, and, and they just start documenting it and, and answering the questions step by step and filling in the canvas. But we do encourage that even at the form phase, you go through each of the four phases. So even at the form phase, you're thinking about the customer, you know, how are they going to, mm -hmm. what customers do we want to engage with right at the beginning? And who's going to test our products um, in the early stages? Who's going to be our first round of adopters? And then mm -hmm. how do we get the feedback from them in the critique phase? And what, what do we need um, in terms of uh, the knowledge aspects that are going to be building and, and being tested through the whole process to make sure we are um, keeping track of our knowledge, we're managing our knowledge, and mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we understand what our new knowledge is, and we've got that feedback in a in a structured um, uh, way that we can analyse and measure how trust and energy is going. Mm. Yeah, so I think it's by biting stuff into small pieces. Mm. So this is probably one of the biggest uh, risks that uh, we've seen is people want to do mm. too many too many big things as they want million dollar projects. And it's like, yes. how about starting with something like uh, 50K or uh, yeah, 20K? Just a little or, bite size piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then plan ahead. How do we actually <laughs> learn from it? What do we want to learn? And you may already have uh, multiple knowledge canvases available. So, you know, what, uh, depending on what we, mm. what we know, what we learn, we may go in the next iteration. We may go mm. in that certain direction. Then we may go left or we may go right or we may park it uh, and, yes. and that's uh, that's uh, some of the stuff that can really help we've got a uh, platform uh, software mm -hmm. as a service where you can actually use the knowledge canvas and uh, and there's a whole lot of training yeah, about fascinating to learn a little bit about that but is that targeted specifically at the innovators in organizations is that the intent is uh, it's, uh, in, in reality innovation happens in lots of places i spend a lot of time not necessarily in innovation hubs or anything like that uh -huh. or, or purely startups so mm -hmm. is uh, a lot of it uh, starts happening in in uh, where, where strategy meets portfolio mm -hmm. so where you're looking at portfolio management where they're determining is okay what's the real value uh, from a strategy strategic point of view where does the business want to go where does the customers want to go how does that connect into portfolio management we can do a million things which ones are we going to uh, going to uh, basically go and go ahead and, and do um, let's just get them going which ones are we dealing with a whole lot of uh, uncertainty and uh, more considered as, uh, as as an innovative sort of sort of project where you you do a lot more of a, an agile approach uh, uh, to to, to implement it and learn, so that's that's where we, where we see so helping people. So you can basically use uh, like a, like a project on a page or initiative on a page. You can use that yes. knowledge canvas to uh, to basically assess mm -hmm. different initiatives and and see where the trust is and uh, an energy where mm -hmm. some of the blockers are, uh, mm -hmm. even before you start. And you go, okay, mm -hmm. this may be really high value, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we haven't got anybody to lead it properly. So yes. uh, maybe we should just park it uh, and mm -hmm. look at something that we create mm -hmm. a bit of success. Get the initial uh, some wins, build the trust and belief in the in the team and the organisation that we we can actually do these things that are that are really hard, especially mm -hmm. across different silos. Yes. Uh, so looking at the, across different tribes, how do you even tackle some of those real business problems that haven't been tackled for the last five five years? Is how can you pick up some of those and uh, and show a bit of uh, momentum uh, and uh, and gain that trust and then look at how you spread that towards more and more teams uh, bit by bit uh, and then you're building that capability here yeah, and uh, change the organization uh, one agent at a time it can so be a bit like that one step at a time <laughs> the, the platform has been um, set up for teams so um, uh -huh. it's one knowledge canvas per project um, and but ten, 10 at the moment 10 people can access that one knowledge canvas and work on it together okay. or share it easily um, that sort of thing so it's trying to set it up so it can be used for the whole team and to contribute mm -hmm. um, from the whole team because yeah. this contribution a, right innovation is not in one person's head or evolution it's generally multiple um, ideas and concepts from many people um that's we get better momentum anyway in terms of our project oh, yeah. as you would frame it um as well as better concepts and better execution we've got more people buying in um yeah, so oh, co yeah. collaborative creating is important. Yeah. Dealing, dealing with the, uh, yeah. the, the, the most complex uh, challenges 
is mm. yeah, you need that uh, that cross-functional team, uh, all the mm -hmm. different people with different Correct. backgrounds, different mm. uh, cultural backgrounds, different views, mm. creative, uh, yes. scientific, uh, all those kind of stuff, uh, bringing mm. that together to try and uh, try and solve it all, experiment. None of them have the answers, <laughs> but together. No, together you find answers. You stumble across ideas. Someone shares yeah. something and that triggers something else. Yeah, it's oh, quite yeah. fascinating how we evolve together. Oh, no. Research has shown again and again yeah. that innovation yeah. um, requires collaboration. It's it's imperative. Mm -hmm. It's not just important. It's it's a must have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate you coming on, talking about all things innovation. Um, if anyone wants to learn more, please check uh, Lee and Yuri out at innovatewisely.com, his website. And the system itself, is that uh, accessible via the website or is that something different? Uh, through uh, subscription, yes. It's accessed yep. through the website, yeah. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah, if everyone wants to go and learn a little bit more about what they're all about in terms of um, the framework and structure, check them out at innovatewisely.com. Thank you for joining us on the Dev Ready Podcast. Really appreciate your time and sharing uh, your experience and background and a little bit about your frameworks and how that might support people in the world of innovation. So thanks for coming on today. Well, thank, thanks, thanks for having, for having us. having us. It's been us, lots uh... of fun. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks, appreciate Andrew. it. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks. Thank you.